Tonight, seven people living in one house. The whole family is suffering. An overwhelmed mother paying for it all. You sitting in a hot mess, huh? At what point in your life did it become okay for you to live in your mother-in-law's basement? This house has a heart condition, and it's on the verge of a heart attack. You're 22 years old sleeping with your woman in your mama's house. Hello? The roof is about to blow. What are you going to do tomorrow? Do you even like him? You get angry and don't know how to handle it. There's no communication. Kenny Yama, get this mom's freeloading family out of the house. Go pack. I don't play. Before they self-destruct. It is not acceptable. Don't record Excuse me right me. now. Excuse me. Not on my watch. Next. Life happens to everybody, even me. Life didn't care that I had written a bunch of books, traveled the world speaking, lived in my dream home, and made a bunch of money. And then life left me broke and feeling broken. The only way to get back was to do the work. I did my work and put my life back together piece by piece. I am Ianla Van Zandt, and I am here to help you do your work. I'm in Chicago, on my way to see a close-knit family on the verge of collapse. This house is in total uproar and upheaval. They all live in the house together, and everybody's unhappy. 47-year-old Alma's inability to let go has created a crisis, turning her home into a rooming house. Just the constant fighting and the anger, it's been hard for me to deal with. Seven people cramped under one roof. Alma's 22-year-old son, Adrian, and his girlfriend live right on the main floor. I want some privacy. I want to start living my own life. While in the basement, it's her 26-year-old daughter, Amanda, along with her boyfriend, Junior, and their two kids. Alma says her kids don't contribute financially as she struggles to keep up with the rent and bills. She says no one but her has a steady job. My pain has been the kids. I've been taken advantage of, I think, by them. While miserable and desperate, Alma doesn't know how to allow her adult kids to stand on their own. Afraid they don't have what it takes to survive, she feels the need to protect her babies. Do I really push them out of the house? Until I have that peace of knowing that they're out there making it on their own, I'm not going to be at peace. Like so many mothers, she struggles with letting go. It took Alma nearly two decades to leave an unhappy relationship with her children's father. I was afraid. I kept having these guilt, you know, of the kids not having their father around. But it was time for him to go. I was miserable. Seven years later, shadows of her broken marriage continue to haunt her household. Amanda and Junior live with constant tension and anxiety. Remember how Dad showed you? Three plus what equals eight. Together since high school, the couple says they fight daily over Junior's struggle to hold down a steady job and support the family. I expect that a man will provide a roof over my head. I need security, dependability, and um, I'm not getting that from him. I'm sorry, that's, that's not a man. You can sit here and put the blame on me, but it took both of us to do this. I know that the stuff that we're going through is, we can get out of it. And you're making that really hard to allow it to happen. Following in her mother's footsteps, Amanda stays with Junior to keep her family together. I just don't want to hurt anybody. You know, that's my thing. I don't want to hurt my kids. <laughs> but she's showing her young kids it's OK to settle for less than she needs or wants. On the main floor, Adrian's angry outbursts have the whole house on edge. Violent arguments with his live-in girlfriend have ended with holes in walls and doors off hinges. I just you know, get angry, and sometimes I don't know how to handle it. Alma fears Adrian could wind up in jail. This household is in total distress, living out a painful pathology. And a good Chicago freezing cold morning to you. I want to meet with the entire family first to get a sense of what's holding them together and pushing them apart. 
So how did it come that your daughter is living with her boyfriend in your house and your son is living with his girlfriend in your house? How did that happen? I don't have the strength, because it's like kicking them out, and I can't see myself doing that. What's the distinction you make between kicking the kids out and allowing the, the, the young adults to create the life they lead? To me, they're not ready. I, How old are you? I don't... I'm 22. 22? Yes. You know, as long as you keep him your boy, he'll never be a man. Why am I here? I mean, I don't see nothing wrong with me. Excuse me. You're 22 years old sleeping with your woman in your mama's house. There's something wrong with that. Hello? <laughs> mm -hmm. Why am I here? I feel the same way you do about us two grown folks still living here with my kids. Um, I've been pushing for that to change for some time. Pushing what? Pushing who? Pushing Junior. <laughs> Why? Uh, because Why I feel you? like he's the man. He should be the that foundation That ain't your husband. For us. That is not your husband. Uh, well. You know what? You set the standard. And you let him know that it was OK for him to come live yeah. with you in your mama's house. You sitting in a hot mess, huh? I have to say yes. So the question would be, how, when, why did the queen lose control of the throne? I don't, I never, I don't think I ever had control because everything that I feel is wrong in my life or, or the things that are hurting me in my life is them not being right and I just, so I guess I, okay, so what I but need from you. I want you, you to hear what you just said. Everything that hurts me in my life is about what's wrong with them. There comes a moment when you have to heal yourself so that you can become a different demonstration for them. Alma doesn't realize this isn't about her kids, but about her. It is important that she gets clear so that everyone's healing can begin. I don't feel any truth in this room. None. But are we all in to create some changes in the next two days? Y'all in? In, in, in. I'm gonna remind y'all of this when y'all start acting strange, okay? <laughs> okay, villagers, off with you. <laughs> it wasn't so bad until they started getting older and older and they weren't budging. <laughs> so let me ask you this. <laughs> okay. Tell me about this. Mm, it, was, it was a mess then, too. Yeah. But what relationship was a mess? My relationship with my husband. Was a mess. Tell me about that. Um. We were on track for a couple of years, and then things just started falling apart. And um, I picked up the slack. And just like you're doing now. Yeah. With your kids. Yeah. You could have gone at any time, but you stayed with him and subjected your children to what? Just a lot of anger, sadness. When you look at Amanda and Junior, do you realize that that's you? Yes. Tell me what part I of see, you I that see you a see. dysfunctional love. Just like it was with you and their father. Dysfunctional. What's the dysfunction that you recognize when you look that at That she's the one trying to put things together. And he can't seem to get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the whole family is suffering because of that. And what about Adrian? I want you to speak to me with a mother's heart. When I see my son, what I see is... I don't have confidence in him because I've been overprotective of him. And that makes me feel... <laughs> that makes me feel... Say it. Hopeless. Yeah, take a breath. I feel to blame as well. Yes, OK. Now we're talking. This is so not about your children. They're here because it's about you. And as the queen of the house, if you don't get this, 
Not only are they going to remain stuck, you will self-destruct. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what you need to do to get there. But you, you, and you, y'all need to get up out of here. And you need to do it today. I told you I don't want you recording, bro. Don't record me right now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. You don't get to disrespect my staff on my watch. You take that in the basement somewhere. On my face. I'm in Chicago, where 47-year-old Alma is struggling to get her adult children and their significant others out of the house and on their own. My pain has been the kids. I've been taken advantage of, I think, by them. While Alma struggles to keep up with the bills and rent, her 22- and 26-year-old adult children flip-flop from one job to the next. I keep pushing the go-back-to-school thing and you keep saying no, no, no. But Alma has created this experience. Her lack of confidence in them has enabled them to stay stuck. You're sitting here acting like you don't understand why your son punches holes in the wall and why your daughter's sleeping with a man in the basement. This is so not about your children. They're here because it's about you. Time is of the essence in this house because Alma's grandchildren are growing and watching. Alma's son, Adrian, has a violent temper that has resulted in damage being done to the home's walls and furniture. Just the anger that he has inside of him, and it's been physical. It's been hard for me to deal with. My producers tell me Adrian patched up the damage prior to filming, but he cannot hide the truth by patching it up. His issues need to be fixed before he winds up in serious trouble. Adrian, this is where you and your girlfriend live? That's where we lay our head. <laughs> why? Tell me why you live in your mom's house. I mean, I, I know there's always the right time, you know, to head out, but I'm not uh, prepared. Tell me about that. <laughs> These are damage I've done when I get angry. You got mama feeding you and girlfriend taking care of your needs. What do you need to be angry about? Uh, maybe it's being here, you know? Maybe I need my own space, I need my own time. You think? Uh, it has to be a piece of your manhood that you are sacrificing to live in your mother's house. So what are you contributing to the village? Can't contribute anything right now. Mm. I don't think anybody expects anything from me, <gasps> but to be myself. Hold on. I don't think anybody expects anything of me. Powerful statement. Do they expect you to fail? Hope not. Because your mother and your sister have one huge statement about you. They are afraid you'll go to jail. Did you know that? Uh, yes. And when people have low expectations of you, that's usually what you live up to. They are low expectations. It's important for you to really get clear about what you expect from yourself and for yourself and punching walls and being upset is not going to get you to where you want to be as a man. My next stop is in the basement, where Alma's daughter Amanda lives in misery with her boyfriend Junior and their two children. OK. So this is your part of the house? Yes. All right. The couple fights constantly, Amanda judging Junior for not holding down a steady job and providing for his family. Like her mother, Amanda is afraid to break up her family. So at what point in your life as a man did it become OK for you to live in your mother-in-law's basement? I don't think it was OK. I've told her recently, you know, I do want to marry you, and I, I want to get everything right back on track. So. But you're the lead. 
I fully understand that. Well, what does that mean, you understand that you're the lead? That I'm the one that's supposed to make the first step. Yeah. Are you the head of this household? Uh, no, I don't think that he's the head of the household. I think I make all the decisions. Obviously, things aren't going to change, so I have given up on him. Junior, you got to feel good about who you are as a man. And would it be accurate for me to say that five days out of seven, you don't? Probably so. Do me a favor. Excuse me for one minute. I sense that she reads your hurt as weakness. Would that be accurate? Yeah. Talk to me. Talk to me, talk to me. I just feel at times like, you know, I try so hard to do the best from what, my knowledge, what I know as a man to do. But she, she tries to turn it around to make it seem like I'm a bad person. When a man breaks his promises to a woman, she loses respect for him. And she will diminish, demean, and belittle him. <laughs> you know what this is? A nest. Who built it? The female? No. The male? The male bird builds the nest. How's your nest building skills? Right now it's probably rusty. Uh, yeah. That's what you gotta be about. Building a nest by any means necessary. You need to figure that out. All right, tell Amanda to come here. I'm done All with right. you. Goodbye. Give me a hug. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome. <Hey. laughs> so. Want me to tell you why I asked you to leave the room? Yes. Because it's very evident to me that you judge him harshly. But here's the bottom line. You brought a man into your mother's basement. If you had required him to have a nest, he would have had a nest. But why should he learn how to build a nest when he can do you in the basement? <laughs> and you look at him right. and you beat him up and you demean him and diminish him because he's not the man you oh, wow. want, need, right. or desire. Let me ask you some hard questions. Are you going to stay with Junior? That would be a no. And have you told him that? I know he does everything in his power to make ha us happy. But I, I just feel like he's failed me. You need to look at the choices you've made the decisions you've made. Doesn't mean he didn't participate, but baby, you got in the nest. Come on, come with me. Let's go. We're going upstairs. Order is the first law of heaven, and this household needs a huge dose of order. Where is this family? Hello? Yeah, I want you. And where's the other one? All of y'all, get in here. I'm done with you people. <laughs> Get in here. This house has a heart condition. It really does, and it's on the verge of a heart attack. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what you need to do to get there. But you, you, and you, y'all need to get up out of here, and you need to do it today. Are you going with her? I don't know. If you want me to rec make a recommendation, I would say don't. Don't go with her. Go take care of you. So, go pack. I don't play. I want you to see what you created. Three grown people that you have enabled, 
because you haven't taken the time to heal your own stuff. Do you take this man or not? Do you take this man as he is right now today with the love and the willingness and the commitment to work together so that both of you can be better? Do you take this man? I'm working with a broken family on the verge of total collapse. A desperate mother struggling to release her failing to thrive children. I want some privacy. I want to start living my own life. A resentful daughter stuck with a man she says can't provide. You see me going down and you let me go down. I did. Worrying. You're you absolutely worrying. right. I lost my interest in you. And a son consumed by uncontrollable rage. This house has a heart condition and it's on the verge of a heart attack. Last night, I ejected Alma's kids from the house to be on their own for the first time. I want you to see what you created. Three grown people that you have enabled because you haven't taken the time to heal your own stuff. I never realized how I had affected them. You know, realizing that I probably caused more damage than was necessary. You always want to do better. I've always tried to do better. But I realized that my better isn't, wasn't good enough. You're still bashing me. You're still doubting me. You're still putting me down. I just don't know what other way to like, you know, tell you how to do it. You started doubting me. And that's when you doubt a person, that's what happens. I'm just telling you that you're, what you tell me, what you promise uh, me. But those are the things the, of the past. The I'm telling you right now. fantasies that you, you know. I'm not promising you no more fantasies. I'm telling you real life. All I want to do is get back on track. OK, but well, what are you going to do tomorrow then? Amanda and Junior are headed toward a breaking point. In the middle of their breakdown are their two small children. For tonight, they decide it's best to spend the evening away from each other. Amanda takes the kids to a friend's house while Junior fends for himself. As of right now, I, I don't have a location to go. Maybe I'll just go hang around the job right now so I'll stay out of everybody's way. After spending the night apart, Amanda and Junior return to the basement together with a new understanding of their current reality. Now, I never want to advocate for the disruption or the dissolution of a family, but there comes a time when there's some realities that just need to be spoken and dealt with, and I need to do that. Hello. Good morning. So, so how was your night? Interesting. Did you find somewhere to stay? Well, I went to work. I just stayed out at the tow truck. You just stayed out at your tow truck place? Did you have any new awarenesses last night when you wake up and the basement is no longer available? Just like a slap in the face. And what, and which side? Both. Uh-huh. And what, what, what did you get clear about? That it's, it's about time to just get out of here. It's about time to, to start building the nest. Why are you negating him when he's talking? It's because it's very easy for him to say that. Yeah. I just feel like he can't do anything without me helping him make a decision. But that's I don't want to feel that reliable but or that's that, not true. that much pressure. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Do you even like him? I do. But I just feel he can't figure things out. You Why can't do you that stay with word? a woman that constantly demeans you? No, it's she, not, that she, not, it's not that she demeans me. It's she just does. He needs help for every decision that to he makes. I'm not talking to you. This woman is done with you. I'm sorry. And it, my heart weeps that she continues to allow you to believe that she's even open to it. Do you take this man or not? Do you take this man as he is right now today with the love and the willingness and the commitment to work with together so that both of you can be better? Do you take this man? Okay. So tell him, I don't take you right now. I don't take you right now. And what does that mean? That I don't want to be in this relationship. What do you hear? I hear you say that you don't want to take me. Okay. That's a truth, Junior. 
a hard truth that'll set you free. This is the moment when you got to man up. My mind is blank. Your mind is blank because your heart is broken. Is that true? Maybe so. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go because you need to just be alone a minute. Okay? I don't want you to lose your dignity. No, it's okay. I think you've done well. <laughs> really, I do. I think you've done really good, and the truth will set you free. And what are you crying for? Because I feel terrible for him. I know he, you know, he's got nothing but good intentions for us, and it breaks me up knowing. You know, it does hurt me. I think maybe because you never saw your parents work together, that you really don't know how to do a relationship. This is a house of low expectations. We're going to fix this right now, because we're going to go tell your mother. Let's go. Come on. In order to heal this family's destructive pathology, Amanda needs to realize she is already repeating her mother's mistake. All right, we got some woman's business <laughs> that we need to handle. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Queenie. <laughs> is Junior a suitable and appropriate suitor for the princess. No, he's not. He wasn't to begin with. Yeah. What were the standards that you set and gave the princess? I've never had my own standards. Tell her that. The relationship between your father and I, he disappointed me. He wasn't the father I wanted for you and Adrian. I just held on out of hopes that he would change for his family. I want you to understand that you were doing to Junior the same thing your mother did to your father. And she modeled for you how to function in unhappiness. I said, I'm gonna be a great mom, and I wasn't. Forgive me for um, having put you through that relationship that shouldn't have lasted that long. You did not give the princess what she needed to inherit the throne. Excuse me one second. I don't tolerate disrespect. This is your palace. You get to say who comes and goes. Excuse me right now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. I'm doing the work with 47-year-old Alma so she can find the strength to stop enabling her adult children. After two days of work, I've given her one piece of homework. Set a firm date for her kids to be out of the house and on their own. If you don't pick them up by the nape of their neck, and drop them out this nest, they will never know that they can fly. The time has come to face her family, test her strength, and deal with the inevitable fallout. I wanted to um, meet with the village so that we can be clear about what we're doing going forward. Because for me, it's like y'all have all lived here in this house together, and it's no communication. Mm -hmm. So, Queenie, you've made some requests of certain members of the kingdom, of the queendom. Is that accurate? Yes. Would you like to share with the queendom what those requests are? So, the plan for you to step into your next phase in your lives is um, an exit plan um, with a deadline of June 1st but I want to move it up to May 1st. Oh, you do? I am moving it up to May 1st. Good for you, Queenie. And who does that exit plan apply to? All of them. So, Junior, you need to figure out where you're going to be nesting, laying your nest, and raising your family. I haven't 
protected Amanda and made you own up to being worthy of having her. And so if you really want her and you want your grandkids and everyone to stay together the way you say you do, you need to figure it out quick. And this time, I'm not backing down, but I want to make sure you're clear about that. That if you want your family, you have until May 1st to figure out where you're going to be. Good for you, Queenie. And the prince has to be out by when? May 1st. May 1st. May 1st. You can do it. I have faith in you. What did you hear the queen say? We have till May 1st. But did you hear her say you can do it? Yes, I did. That you, that you can do it. Because yesterday you said to me that no one expects me to do anything. That wasn't true. She expects you to stand on your own. I let my own insecurities kind of be a reflection of you, and that's not correct. She has prevented you from knowing that you have wings. And it's time for you to fly. Alma has one more requirement to establish order. Adrian's living girlfriend must vacate immediately. I should have said this to you long ago, but Tiffany should not be here. This is my house. I deserve to be happy here. You know, the relationship that you've had with her, it's been crazy. It's broken my heart. That's who you choose. So if you want her in your life, you need to go find that place where you and she can be together. And as much as I want to protect you, it's, I've realized it's not my job anymore to protect you. You're a man. You'll figure it out. But Tiffany, she doesn't belong here. And my request is that she not sleep over. Beginning? Beginning now. <sighs> Was I not invited here? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. But he's been allowed to get away with this for so long. This is what it looks like when you don't have consequences. I should have said this to you long ago, but Tiffany should not be here. So if you want her in your life, you need to go find that place where you and she can be together. Excuse me one second. I don't tolerate disrespect. This is your palace. You get to say who comes and goes. You're going to get up and walk out on your mother because she tells you you can't have your unmarried girlfriend in your bed in her house? This is a consequence because he's been allowed to do this. Punch holes in walls. Bring his woman up in here. This is a little boy. This is a little boy playing big man games. So now, Junior, you're the elder man in the house right now. You're the elder man. You need to go check on the junior man and find out where he is. I want you to see that without your direction, without your instruction, that your man is leaving. Your mouth is shut and his mind is working. So Queenie, you created this. And he's going to manipulate you. What you going to do? Because this is your palace, Queenie. Can you guys just wait right there for a minute? Hey, why, do, why do you keep doing that to your mom? F*** that, bro. You need to go in there and apologize to her, man. Apologize. You have to. No matter what, dude, she gave you the roof over your head. But you can't treat your mom like that, bro. Who the f*** spit in his face? It said don't f record, bro. Just hold on for a second. You f hear him? Are they, is there a disturbance out there? Excuse me. He's in the backyard.
because you and I both know that you're taking advantage of her like that. Where is the prince? I am outside in the winter with no darn coat on. Well, you need to go in there and apologize to your mom, bro. In here? Yeah. Well, he locked it? Let's at least go upstairs. And... All right, I'm done. I'm not doing this. Oh, the gate's open, mama. Go right there, baby. You want to come help? Yes. Come help me. At least talk to this lady. Just at least apologize to your mom, dude. Adrian, it is not acceptable yeah. that you stand up and walk and turn your back I on I told you I don't want you to record it, bro. Don't record Adrian. me right Excuse now. Me. Don't me. Excuse me. Me right now. Excuse me. Don't record me right now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. You don't get to disrespect my staff on my watch. You take that in the basement somewhere. On my face. What is he gonna do? He gonna go after the cameraman. He didn't really raise that up in my face. Not on my watch. That needs to end today. That needs to end today. See, he didn't say a word to me. He's going after the cameraman. He left me alone. Because I, you want crazy? I'm going to show you crazy. I got some crazy for you. Because this right here is crazy. These are guests. We are guests in this palace. And I was invited here. Was I not invited here? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. But he's been allowed to get away with this for so long. So. Let's you and I have a conversation here. I want you to get real clear. This is what it looks like when you don't have consequences. Don't Excuse record me right Excuse now. Me. Excuse me. Don't record me right now. Excuse me. Bro. Excuse me. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. You don't get to disrespect my staff on my watch. You take that in the basement somewhere. Got my face. That needs to end today. That needs to end today. Was I not invited here? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. But he's been allowed to get away with this for so long. It's time for Alma to create some clear boundaries to put an end to Adrian's rage. If she doesn't, her son will continue to manipulate her and control his mother's household. You have not taught him to accept authority, to respect it, to accept it. You've accommodated that behavior. Adrian, 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 come here. Come here and do what? That's how you get manipulated. Mm -hmm. Let him go. This is done, Lady Alma, this is done. There has to be a consequence for this behavior. This will get him killed because he doesn't know boundaries. And he will expect all people in authority to tolerate this kind of behavior. I know you think you're protecting him, but you're not. You have to create a new standard and a new normal. And it can't be about appeasing him. It has to be about laying down the law, really. I want to know what the consequence is of this behavior. Do we have one? Well, can we make one up? I told him she's going to kick him out and not let him back in. <laughs> I can't abandon him. You're not abandoning him. You're calling him higher. Call him higher. You can love him unconditionally, but still have clear boundaries. So now is when the law of the land must be laid down. Post an eviction notice on the door. You on a 72-hour absence because your behavior today was inappropriate. And should you insist on being here, all measures will be taken to remove you. Words are not enough at this point. Want me to strip the bed for you? Let's go strip the bed. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. No, you, I need to know that you can do something. Let's go. 
Alma needs to assert her authority by taking action. Do you understand what you're doing? Tell me what you're doing. I'm giving him a sign. Yeah. You're saying no. I'm saying no. Come on, strip it. I'm saying no to inappropriate behavior. This is unacceptable. Yeah. See me? I put a sign up that said no vacancy. But that's just me. It's crucial for the entire family to reaffirm Alma's decision. So who is going to be the one to let him know that he's not welcome here for the next 72 hours? I have to be the one. And will you support her in doing that? Yes. And when the response comes and it's inappropriate, what is your response? One word. There is no. No. Yeah. Unacceptable. You cannot be here for the next 72 hours. I don't know what this is going to look like, but I know you asked me here to create change. I know you asked me here to help you see things clearly. I know Adrian asked me here to see, to help him get direction. I think my work here is done. <laughs> uh-huh, right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with this. Flap. Fly or splat. <laughs> you can do this. It'll be hard at first, but I promise you, I promise you, it'll be worth it. I promise you. I wouldn't steer you wrong. I wouldn't. Okay. okay.